Uh, let's uh, go to Jamie Howe, who's been listening in on what's going on down on the pit lane, and we're getting some tactics coming into play even this early on, uh, uh, Jamie. Yes, I've been listening to as many of the team radios as possible, and uh, when, a couple of interesting things I've heard. The first one is on the number 912, the Porsche uh, and GTLM with Lawrence Vantor behind the wheel. They're telling him that Corvette behind you, which is the number three with Antonio Garcia in it, he said that is for position, but right now we are going to need you to save fuel. So they're telling a racing driver, save fuel, but don't let him get around you either. So I can't imagine that is an easy task. Another interesting thing that I've heard is on the number 12 with Townsend Bell behind the wheel. They're currently second in GT Daytona. They're having what seems to be some communication issues from the spotter to the car. I don't think it's a constant issue but it is something that they're working through. So when it gets dark outside and the race gets going and people start to get tired not having your spotter, well, you can imagine how difficult that will make it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Another position gained there for Alonso. He's up into third now. He's got past Dane Cameron on that last lap and he's got about, well, the second half there is a number 10 car on our screen as he chases after the Elio Castro Nevis Acura car number seven. So Alonso, Alonso is charging hard here in that Conoco Milano Cadillac. And it's still a rip-roaring pace being offered from the LMP2 class. Pastor Maldonado has now gone quicker than Nicola Lapierre. That's a 136.8 again, a new fastest lap in LMP2. Okay, it's only got four cars, but this is an impressive spell in their race with the two Platinums uh, duking it out for, for dragon speed. Pastor Maldonado leading Nicola Lapierre by only 1.2 seconds. Yeah, and Enzo Guibert, who's uh, only a few seconds behind him, he's just turned the lap, but only a tenth of a second away from Maldonado as well yeah. last time around. And that number 52 car running third in LMP2. Yeah, it's clearly a, a, it's a very start. nice spell in the race for LMP2 cars. Maybe conditions just about perfect yeah. for the air, uh, air temperature, and uh, um, the fact that the tyres may be well and truly up to temperature as well. 62 Ferrari heading out of the West Horseshoe with Spaniard Miguel Molina at the wheel of that Risi Competizione Ferrari leading by one second from Tommy Milner in the Corvette car number four then it's Patrick Pile and Dirk Muller they're only a couple of seconds back each of them for Porsche and for Ford respectively a new best lap in the race for Alonso in car number 10, 135.434. It's now within a second of Elio Castro Nevers, so he pulled him in by about uh, seven tenths on that last lap. Meanwhile, not too far behind them, well, behind, right behind them is uh, Dane Cameron, number six Acura. Then behind them, uh, Eric Curran and Harry Tignall well, in the number 31 and number 55 car. They have exchanged positions each of the last two laps, so a super battle going on there. And uh, still, there's only uh, well, just eight seconds well, six seconds covering the top uh, six at the moment. Starting to get a little more dark. The lights more obvious here as we look down on the tri-oval from the IMSA Broadcast Centre here at the World Centre of Speed. There are a couple of cars running without headlights. I noticed the 44 Magnus car going through without headlights. What I've not seen on the screens yet that the team see as well is the headlights on message from race control. I'm not suggesting there's a problem with the 44. And at the moment, until they're told to, in fact, there's a car going underneath now. That is the 44. Yes, the rear lights are on, but the front lights are absolutely not. As Alonso cheeks left, then right, then right again to get right on the tail of Elio Castro Nevis and he gets a really good run out of turn one and through the infield S is now down towards the international horseshoe so-called because the flags of nations are on the outside of that he carves his way past the number 88 Maple Leaf adorned Audi in the hands of Roman De Angelis there's a hugely talented young driver and a name to watch for the future being passed by a double Formula One world champion, albeit in a different class, of course. So, no harm in that at all for the young man. No, Roman Diaz is just uh, 17 years of age, but actually not the youngest driver in the race. Stop it. That would be uh, Parker Chase, oh. who's a week, uh, a week younger. And yeah. here is the pass for second, pos for second position, as Alonso's got the draft and goes to the high side on Castro Neves. They're working their way down towards the bus stop. Castro Neves goes 
early to the inside and that's clever he's using the traffic and alonso just drops back for a moment can he get the run out of the bus stop huge amount of curve taken by both of the daytona prototype drivers cadillac with the big v8 engine passing these cars as if you were on forza motorsport it's an extraordinary thing to watch it looks like one of those challenges johnny palmer where you start at the back of 20 cars and you've got two laps to pass the whole field doesn't <laughs> yeah, it it does looks like it's on fast forward and then some and it, that's the battle for the lead in fact because they're almost three abreast across the line so leading the way just is rene ras here comes alonso for a move on castaneda for second place but the next the no. track turns right so i don't think he has got him right and left and castaneda defends one once more extraordinary stuff 0.25 of a set of a, of a quarter of a second covered the top three as they flashed across the line that lap and exactly the same type of battle for fourth fifth and uh, sixth at the moment we can't oh. focus on both at the same time but cameron curran and tinknell are nose to tail also i think for a moment there alonso was up into second place and now he's had to drop back into third because traffic was there now into the final part of the infield sector and heading out on again and onto the high banks again it seems that Alonso has just lost a little place or two a little time maybe a tenth Rast, Castro Nevis, Alonso, Cameron, Curran, Tinknell, Miller, Goikberg, Owen Dumas that's your top ten Mazda, Acura and Cadillac nothing between them the 18 dragon speed car the car that had the damage to the front of that car earlier on of course that running solidly at the moment trying to make up time that number 18 machine and leading the blue numbered cars for lmp2 but what the blue number one showing on the side you can easily see that now in the gathering gloom So, 20 hours and 44 minutes to go. We're uh, three and a quarter into it, therefore, and Rene Rast uh, has, at the moment, weathered the storm back to Elio Castroneves. He's possibly slightly more concerned about Fernando Alonso and holding the Cadillac from Konica Minolta back. No change. Oh, no, Harry Tingle has got ahead of Eric Curran, so that's for fifth position. Car 55 now ahead of 31, then for fifth place, as the Brit is coming in the second of the two Masters and now only 0.6 of a second off the back of Dane Cameron. Right, and, and Chris Miller is hanging on to them as well, in actual fact. Yeah, he is. Good job, Chris number 84 Miller. car for JDC Miller Motorsports. Not yeah, far behind so. him in the, in the sister car is Mich uh, Michel Goikberg, uh, and uh, pretty close behind him also is Will Owen, uh, with uh, the many laps down number five car in that little battle as well. Yeah, so three for the lead. Now each of them only separated by 0.4 of a second as they bunch up again into the braking area for the bus stop chicane. And then, as Jeremy quite rightly says, four cars, effectively five cars, for the battle for fourth position. So it is four. Cameron, Tignall, Curran and Chris Miller. Whipping by the outside of car number 12 there, Townsend Bell, second place in the GTD category, were the top three in the overall in dpi nothing between them as they go beneath our feet once more and just about hanging on to the race lead is rene rast with alia castaneves and fernando alonso using unconventional lines it could be said into turn one just to try and cause a distraction for rene rast but it's not happening just yet charging their way into the international horseshoe on this lap and here comes Alonso's chat, surely he's going to get his front wheels now level with Castroneves' his rear wheels in the Acura, the kink is Bring next and kink. he has to concede, but <laughs> <think> uh, <laughs> last minute stuff and um, well it was a bit of a game of chicken that into the kink, the, was, certainly it? not the first time we've seen that over the years, but Castroneves had the track position. Hey, great stuff there, super battle going on between, well, between these three cars at the front of the field, Rene Rass uh, just holding on, but not very, very much in that uh, number 77, Mazda. Great battle. Side by side they are uh, through NASCAR 1 and 2. Now, this should be second place for Fernando Alonso because he has the low side through speedway turn Look how 2. how evenly matched they are, Johnny. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, even though he had the track position, there's nothing between the straight-line speed of those two. But Castroneves this time has to allow Alonso to break.
break a little bit later. And Fernando Alonso now up to second place from what was fifth. Wasn't that fascinating to see the, the Cadillac and the Acura neck and neck all the way around the back here, all the way down the back track. And Castro never thinking, OK, he's got me here. I'm on the outside. There's nothing I can do. I've got to tuck in behind him. Yeah, and uh, now Rene Rast using the high part of the track into the try oval that was because of traffic he's going to be caught under braking again by fernando alonso who looks epic on the brakes in the number 10 car that's where he catches up all the time and on the infield the more sort of road course element of this daytona international speedway this for me is where fernando alonso is able to catch that little bit of extra time up plus i mean he's just like a rocket out of turn six so let's see whether he got the opportunity to do that past the Mazda again this time car 77 Rene Rast leading the way by half a second from an Fernando Alonso but Fernando is coming there's no doubt about that coming out of turn number five and up towards the left hand kick that feeds them back onto the oval then and Alonso isn't going to be quite close enough but is this him deliberately hanging back to then get on the loud pedal earlier than the Mazda which in fact can pull away so on this lap, in this stage of the stint, it looks like the Mazda has got more power than the Konica Minolta Cadillac, unlike the Acura, which seem to be very much evenly paced. As they go up through the gears, though, and uh, into the higher rev range, the Cadillac reels it back in again. And the gap is down to nothing as they work their way through the bus stop chicane. They're concentrating, obviously, on the DPI lead for... Uh, reasons why because we may well have a lead change in the not too distant future but elsewhere Pastor Maldonado and Nicola Lapierre are keeping up the speed in the LMP2 category they're still only separated by 0.6 of a second Miguel Molina continues to and lead down the inside level. goes Alonso yes he does and he's down the inside that was just on the brakes he just decided I'm gonna go for this dive to the inside and takes over the lead in car number 10 well I told you he was just supersonic on the brakes and they're glowing red hot even at this stage of the evening we're a minute away from official sunset here at Daytona International Speedway 558 and uh, well we go into nighttime officially with a brand new leader. That's the first time the 10 car has led this year's race. And Fernando Alonso, truly epic still.